We're here at a 7.5 megawatt solar farm in New Jersey, and today I brought my $30,000 drone to inspect all 30,195 panels. So let's get started. Today we brought all of our drone gear to do a maintenance inspection on this over 10 year old solar farm that was built back in 2011. Recently there's been lots of combiner and inverter box issues going on here where large sections of the site are actually going offline. So we were brought in by a commercial solar company to help do this inspection and pinpoint the areas of the site that are actually are having these issues. It is really important to actually monitor these energy assets usually once or twice a year to help make sure that nothing falls into disrepair and if there are any issues they can easily be fixed. Uh, so what do you say? Let's go in and start setting up all our stuff. All right, so we just uh, got all of our drone gear set up. So some of the stuff I have here is the controller with my iPad, which I can run uh, the flight planning software so we can actually do this inspection. And then I have my big binder of pre-flight checklists and different drone laws, uh, so I'm always prepared. And then over here, I have my uh, solar irradiance meter, which actually tells us how much sun energy is actually hitting the panels. So if it was really cloudy out, then we couldn't really do the inspection because uh, the thermal camera can't really uh, pick up all those differences, differences in temperature. And then back here, I have my charging setup. So right now we're doing this inspection in the middle of January. It's around 20 degrees outside, uh, which is super cold, way too cold for these batteries. Uh, so you have to make sure that they're always going to be at operating temperature. So I usually run my car throughout the day and make sure that the interior is heated. And then uh, the, dr the drone actually takes two of these batteries to fly and flies for around 20 minutes, which, which is actually also reduced when it's cold outside like, like today. Uh, so then once I'm done flying, I can easily pop these on to the charger. And this is actually a fast charger. So I can charge four batteries in around an hour or an hour and a half, uh, which is really great because you don't want to buy, you don't, you don't want to buy too many of these batteries because just one of these costs $500. And then down here we have our, our actual drone set up. So uh, really the bread and butter of this inspection is actually this right here, which is actually a thermal camera. So right here we have a thermal sensor and then a visible or RGB sensor, which is basically just a regular camera. And so what this does when the drone actually flies over these panels, it can see d differences in temperature of a panel that's you know not operating correctly or has some defects in it to one that's actually uh, producing efficiently. Uh, so you can actually see these differences um, within the entire farm and act actually be able to pinpoint the areas that are having these issues. And so a lot of the issues that we're actually looking for include cell defects, if there's cracking on a module, if there's delamination, if there's string outages, diode um, faults, um, all these types of um, defects, the thermal camera can easily uh, locate these and you can actually then send out uh, say like a maintenance team to go fix these issues. So we're about to start flying and this is actually our flight plan. So you can see this uh, satellite photo of all these, uh, with all the solar ro uh, rows here. And these green lines that you see up around here, that's actually like where the drone will be flying. So what it's gonna do is kind of map out all throughout the entire rows of panels. And it's gonna take a photo which I'll get to in a second, around uh, every 1.5 seconds. So I'm just gonna check to make sure all my settings are correct. And if you actually are interested in knowing more about how to do the inspection and use the flight planning software, I'm, I'll link up in the description a video that we have that's a complete tutorial of how to actually uh, plan out this mission. All right, so I just did all my pre-flight checklists and now let's go start, start the fly. All right, so the drone, is, it, just, it just took off, and now it's going to be uh, going to the other side of the farm where it's going to start doing the inspection. So like I was saying before, the entire flight is actually autonomous. So you can see all the rows of panels that the drone is actually flying by right now. And so the, the, you can see right here the shutter. Every 1.5 seconds, it's going to take a photo, and it actually, it actually just finished one of its rows uh, passes. Uh, we call these the green lines are passes. Uh, so now it's going to tra transition uh, down. And now it's going to go to the right and start taking photos of the next rows. So before they had drones to actually do this inspection, there was a few different ways that they would manually do this. So one of them being something called IV curve tracing or electrical testing, where basically some technicians would go out throughout the entire site 
and plug into what's called a string. So these panels are actually strong in a series of multiple panels. So at this slate in particular, it's uh, 11 panels and one string. So that means if there was some kind of fuse that blew or if there was some kind of cable that was broken, potentially all 11 panels could go offline. So a good way I like to think about it is if you had Christmas lights and you know how one, like one of the bulbs breaks and the entire rest of the bulbs don't work anymore, that's basically what's happening with these strings. So the problem is how long this would actually take for the technicians to actually do this. So at this site in particular, there's 2,745 strings. Uh, so that means they have to unplug and plug back in that many times uh, to inspect the entire site, which you know takes a couple, of gu a couple guys sometimes a few weeks to do that. One other method is they actually would have a handheld thermal camera and individually uh, scan each individual panel. So, you know, unlike the drone, which can, you know, see all these panels at one time with the thermal camera, they would be out there uh, just one at a time and going through every single panel. All right, so we're making some good progress. We just finished one of the passes and I, I stopped it because uh, the battery is getting pretty low. But I did want to point out, there's a lot of these like cell defects you can actually see I'm on a ton of these panels, which is, you know, makes sense because this site is over, like I said, back over 10 years old, these modules. So over all that time of weather impacts and them um, operating for that long, uh, there can certainly be a lot of these problems. But uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna bring this drone back and we're gonna bring it in for a landing and switch out the batteries. Okay, so my controller battery is actually getting pretty low as well. So I'm going to change that out. And then let's pop in those new batteries into, into the drone. And then we can get back to our flying. Okay, so we're making some good progress here. We actually moved um, our setup to a different location on the farm to get a better um, view of the drone flying. Uh, so uh, we're really seeing, again, like just a ton of different cell defects, some shading and some string outages on this side of the farm. Really this drone technology is just so exciting. And you know, this, these inspections, you know, only actually started happening a couple of years ago that this was uh, really becoming mainstream. And it's just amazing to see how much money and time this is saving for um, solar companies, asset owners, and it's just, I'm excited for the future of, you know, using these thermal drones and cameras uh, to inspect these solar farms. All right, so we just finished the flight and now I'm gonna go walk you out there and just give you some examples of some of the anomalies we're actually uh, picking up here. Okay, so we're at the first example here. So some of these modules are actually having some um, cell hotspots. So a cell is actually this little square uh, box on each module and there's dozens that make up every module. And so what can happen if there is delamination, cracking, um, bad solder joints, these can actually cause hotspots um, on these areas. So we can actually see some of these, this panel right in front of us up here has a multitude of different um, cell hotspots, but you wouldn't really even be able to know this uh, just by looking at the panel uh, by itself. You can never actually see these issues without the thermal camera. Okay, so we're gonna walk over here and take a look at all these different shading issues that are actually happening. So these trees over here um, throughout most of the day have been really casting a lot of shadows on all these, these first few rows of modules. And we can see right from the drone's thermal camera, uh, the darker spots, um, which is uh, cooler temperatures, and then how it's actually um, also casting onto the panels uh, throughout this entire area. Not only do these issues actually cause you know, production loss, but we can see at some of these modules right here um, on the thermal camera view that there's actually some cell hotspots occurring on here because of the shade. So this can really happen. I'm um, getting some more internal resistance. And over time, if there's consistent shade on modules, uh, this can sometimes cause a premature failure. So up here, we actually have a cracked module. So the surface glass of the panel does actually have cracks all over it. And so you don't need a drone or a thermal camera to really see that there's an issue here, uh, but you can still definitely easily point these out without having to walk uh, through all these rows and look through every single panel.
Okay, so now we just finished up doing all the flights and data collection, but now let's go head back to the office. Okay, so it's been about a week later and our inspection report is now ready to be reviewed. But before we dive into that, uh, let's take a quick recap of everything that did happen during the inspection. So in total, flying the site took one and a half work days. And throughout that time, we had clear skies, completely sunny, high solar, solar irradiance, and very low wind. Within that time, we took 6,264 thermal and RGB photos, and then we uploaded all these pictures uh, to our software partner for this project, uh, who are good friends of ours, Raptor Maps. And using their AI machine learning technology, they analyzed all the pictures and generated this report, which then details the exact issues and where they're located. So what do you say? Let's go take a look at the findings. Okay, so here we have the findings table, and this is gonna tell us the different types of anomalies that we did find, the number of anomalies that we found, the number of modules affected, the estimated affected DC in kilowatts, the estimated affected DC in percentage, the estimated annual impact in kilowatt hours, and the estimated annual impact on dollars. Like I was mentioning during the inspection, I did see a lot of different cell anomalies throughout the entire site, and I was correct. Uh, so we can see here, there's a bunch of different cell highs, low, medium, and multi. And what these different categories mean, so high would be a higher temperature hotspot, and low would be a lower temperature hotspot. So the high ones would have higher priority over the low temperature hotspots because they can potentially cause a fire. And then going into the multis, this is multiple hotspots on the same module. And then we can see like something like cell multi low. There was a lot of these affecting over 600 modules and costing around $8,000 a year in um, estimated annual revenue loss. We also had 15 modules that had cracking like the one I mentioned earlier. We have some diodes, some diode multis, um, short circuits, uh, some offline modules, a lot of, a lot of shading as well uh, throughout the site. And then a, the big one is uh, we had 13 string outages. So uh, like I was uh, showing you before, these were strung in a series of 11 panels. Uh, so we had 13 entire strings that were offline. Now looking at the totals, we had over a thousand anomalies found throughout the entire site almost 2,000 modules that were affected, which means almost one out of every 15 panels had an issue. So all those issues are affecting around 238 kilowatts, which is also rep represented as a percentage of a 2.80 of the site's entire power. And then we have the annual impact in kilowatt hours as well as dollars, which ended up being around $21,000 in revenue loss per year at a power purchase agreement rate of 0.06 cents per kilowatt hour. Next, we have the anomaly location table, which actually lists all the issues with their corresponding thermal and RGB photos. So we can click on here, say the string one, and see the thermal picture, as well as the regular um, RGB photo. We can even rank these categories too. So we can click on priority, and then rank this from high to low priority issues. So this cell hotspot, for example, is one of the first issues that they say should be addressed and we can click on that photo and see it right there again. Lastly, we have the interactive site map, which is probably one of the coolest tools out there. Uh, so this actually takes your site drawings and then overlays all the issues uh, that were found. So then what you can do is actually zoom in on these and they even use your, um, your numbering scheme uh, that you already have determined and use for your own O&M team. So you can easily figure out which row and which, which panel um, it's referring to. And then we can click on these different color-coded uh, boxes. It will tell us the issue with the corresponding photos again. And then so up here at the right, we can actually see all the different color-coded issues uh, throughout the entire site. And let's go scroll over here and say, click on one of these green strings. And then we were met with the photos, which tell us the issue, as well as the row numbers, panel numbers, everything that we need to know to help, to help locate the issue um, out there in the field. Down here, we can see all the different shading issues that were happening on that one side of the farm. Um, all these different rows of panels um, had some significant shading uh, throughout most of the day. And scrolling over here, let's go take a look at some diode issues. So I'm gonna click on this pink box and then we can click on the corresponding thermal picture and see, you can clearly see uh, the issue on that as well. So as you can see, this is a very straightforward and easy to use map, but with very comprehensive data uh, to be able to find all these issues and uh, really visualize them throughout the entire site. Remember that we offer these inspection services nationwide. So if you're interested in getting your feet wet with using drones to monitor your solar assets, then you can go to the dronelifenj.com 
and set up a consultation with someone from our team. You can also personally reach out to me on my LinkedIn account to see what I'm up to, or if you have any questions about drones and solar, I'm always happy to help out. But anyways, thanks so much for watching. Please leave a like and a comment if you found the video informative, and I'll catch you again in the next one.